so over this weekend, uh, you've seen our friend uh, Ken Roshan from uh, uh, the Umbrella Syndicate um, and uh, Big Events USA uh, taking some photos over the weekend. Uh, he was here two years ago to help us out with that. Uh, I was lucky enough to have met him several years ago at a uh, CEO space conference down in Henderson, uh, Nevada. It was a 10-day business conference. Um, there's a lot of information here, but there was a lot of information in, in 10 days at any conference. And uh, Ken was the event photographer there, um, but he does a, a quite, quite a bit more than that. You know, he's involved with book publishing and, and really building community uh, using uh, this, this kind of media. And he's going to be sharing, uh, you know, some of the photos that he's taken over this weekend and uh, uh, more about uh, his mission. And, and maybe he'll be sharing uh, some of the book projects that he's working on that uh, probably a lot of us in the audience can actually uh, take part and uh, be a part of. So help me welcome uh, Ken Roshan. Thank you. I have it on. It's not good? Okay. All right. So I decided to use this because you guys are developing amazing ideas in the world that the world doesn't know about. And you're disrupting the world because there's a lot of people that may not like these ideas taking away financial gains that they can have by having something that's inferior to what your ideas are. And then the download is that your minds are so brilliant. But if you don't download them and capture the brilliance, you don't have a legacy. You don't have something that you can transfer on to people you love. We're to communities like this. So that is what the idea of this presentation is about. So I'm going to interject a, a little humor, or try to, here and there. So I do believe in the, this Keep Smiling movement, the Keep Smiling movement being <coughs> that we amplify love. So if you have not held one of these cards and you wish to, all you're basically saying in the world is that you're committed to making problems go away and solutions really prevail so that people have more love, more, um, more abundance, and certainly um, more collaboration. Oh, geez. I did not know this was going to happen. So, well, at least my logo is still intact. Oops. So this is a, obviously a true story. Suddenly, through a force not yet fully understood, Darren Belsky's apartment became the center of a new black hole. So anything is possible in this slideshow. So I have some ground rules that I want to go over just so that we are playing on the same level and uh, having respect. So I'd like to cut the vulgar language down to as close to zero as possible from the audience. I don't want you yelling bad words at me, OK? <laughs> <laughs> so there is one curse word, and I'm not going to apologize for it. It's really needed for this particular uh, presentation. And then I have two more rules. Uh, the, so if you guys want to write these rules down, I'd appreciate it. But uh, write the first and second laws of thermodynamics. The first rule of thermodynamics is that you do not talk about thermodynamics. And the second rule of thermodynamics is you do not talk about thermodynamics. <laughs> All right? Thank you. So. To have something we can actually start with, a lot of the presentations go right into the guts and really high level information. I wanted us to at least agree that this is an acceptable chart for evolution so we can proceed with a lot of the other information. <laughs> go Canada. <laughs> All right, so I've written 22 books and I did my first book in 2009. It was called Becoming the Perfect Networker, Succeeding One Connection at a Time. And the concept is that when you shake hands with someone, what are you doing besides getting their card? If you're taking their card and you're providing value to them, for instance, if you find out they need a solution or a connection, and you make that connection or solution happen the next day, you've actually given value to them and you've caused a relationship to happen. I'm fortunate enough that when Aaron and I met, we looked at how we could help each other, and those solutions came about within 24 hours. And since that book was published, I have published more than a couple a year after that. I've helped other people publish books. One of the problems with publishing your own book is that you don't necessarily have the funding or the marketing plan or the understanding of guerrilla marketing or leveraging. So what my company does is make sure the books show up at events like this, shows up at other top events. It also creates a marketing and social proof uh, aspect, which is a campaign. So if you think about the top people in this community and they were to be holding your book and being photographed with that book, they're telling their community. So the, the basis of my presentation is how do you leverage brilliance? Instead of working in an isolated fashion, we actually harness the community 
and the social proof that validates that person actually has a solution worth becoming a reality in the, uh, in the general mainstream. I've been to 104 countries, that may not matter in this particular presentation, but I, I've traveled the world and I like to meet people that are making a difference in the world. And I have 962 reviews that I have not even paid for, so that's pretty good. Yeah. I had to earn them. Okay, so this is an explanation why a later presentation has higher attendance. So the gravity on Earth we all know, but a lot of people I've talked to in this, even this community did not know that the gravity of the uh, blanket is actually about 100 times higher than the force when you're outside of your bed. So I, I saw this gentleman first day at the bar, and it was 10 a.m. or 9 a.m., so he, he, he's a man who believes in what he has on his shirt. So, so to be on this stage, I felt it was expected to show formulas. Obviously, every single person here has gone through a lot of formulas, a lot of great information, and so I will be no exception. But here goes nothing. So. I saw this on the internet, I thought this might be helpful. So it says in the uh, part B, it says, does the object continue to move after it comes to rest? If yes, how high will it go up the slope before it comes to rest? Clever thing, put an elephant on the slope, and then it, the answer is no, because the elephant will get in the way, so. <laughs> and uh, I do want you to expand your mind. I really do believe thinking outside the box, and this is a great example here of expanding So when all else fails, choose God. It says, uh, it's a little hard to read these, but I, uh, I'll read them to you. So it says, explain why phosphorus trichloride is, is uh, polar. Well, it's because God made it that way, and that's. <laughs> and then here's the curse word I promised you. I know you've been waiting at the edge of your seats for this one. All right, so if I'm traveling at 100 feet per second in a car, and the speedometer, uh, and the speed limit is 65 miles per hour, am I speeding? And then obviously the answer is look at the speedometer, asshole. And, <laughs> and a lot of you are probably concerned right now that you planted your butts in the seat and that you're kind of close to the front so you can't get out of here very quickly. This is about all you're going to learn in this presentation, so fair warning. <laughs> So I am all about disruptors. The main reason I came to this event is to actually support the fact that being a disruptor is someone that has to be brave. There's someone that's gonna, that's gonna be scrutinized and I wanna share ideas of how we as a community can disrupt and actually cause disruption because we're all disruptors working together. So I wanna just have you ponder some thoughts. So what if disruptors uh, were supported by community disruptors, which are us? Uh, what would you do if you knew you could not fail because a lot of people have failure as a, as a scarcity or a mindset that causes fear. And then what if a book, the book that you have in your head and your heart changed the world? And that's why I want to encourage anyone and everyone in this community that has amazing information to download information. Because when that information becomes shared, whether it's sold or, uh, or, or actually shared with this community, you, and another thing that happens with the book is you do research. So when you're downloading, you're actually perfecting what you know and you're becoming what you know. So when I wrote my first book, Becoming the Perfect Networker, I had to actually call myself to be that type of networker every single day. And then marketing and social proof, which is what I do, are almost always the missing ingredient. So if you look at great content, which this community has, and it's not married to distribution, what well, you have is a secret. Ironically, if you have great distribution, you don't have horrible content, you have noise. <laughs> so when they're working together, you have a, a crystal clear message that's loud and clear. <clears throat> so, Let's disrupt. So this says on the bottom here, there goes William again trying to win support for the little bang theory. <laughs> so this presentation, I want to make sure it's clear what it will include and what it will not include. This, uh, this is a cutting edge technology. Home Depot releases a new Bluetooth cordless hose. <laughs> and this, this presentation, this presentation takes on the myth that Santa does not exist. It do he does. <laughs> this presentation will, sa it will save your life. And all these slides, if you want them, I'm going to give you a, a phone number that you can text me. The slide deck's available to you. And later on, I'll show you a, a compilation of slides just as a little teaser. But I've taken a multitude of slides that 2016 and 2018 conference, which I'm making available just by 
uh, the fact that you may not have been in the room at a certain time, you want these slides. This is a kind of best of slide presentation. So this is a very serious question. Have you ever imagined a world with no hypothetical questions? <laughs> So if you haven't noticed, my presentation is not only wacky, but it's going to be the only presentation that's created, I think, while I was here. Because every time I go to an event, I'm actually trying to connect the community to my message or my message to the community. So you're going to see a lot of pictures of people that are obviously from this event. And it's actually to honor and highlight all the people that create this community. So this is from a book I wrote last year, the No Nonsense Book or Nonsense. And I had a tough rule. If I read something or heard something and it made sense, it could not go in this book. <laughs> and this is my own nonsense that I created. Anytime you want to see if your nonsense is yours and original, just Google it. If it doesn't show up, you get it. <laughs> so if there's an exception to every rule, is there an exception to this rule? That's, that's a nice nonsense question, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so, thoughts to ponder. How do we connect this powerful conversation with younger generations? Next Gen Summit, I, so I work in communities that I kind of quote unquote don't belong in. Because if you think about it, if I'm an amplifier and I'm a distribution agent, the best thing I can do is find really rich content. So Next Gen Summit is a community of millennials that are about three or 400 people, uh, young, young adults, that are having a conversation very much like this. How do we disrupt the world? How do we create a better world. And what's cool is I was thinking when I was writing this presentation, what if some of you were invited to their, present, their uh, event that's in New York City every June and that we scholarship some of them to come here? These kids are um, extraordinary. Some of these kids are making $30,000 to do a five minute video on YouTube. I mean, they have amazing reach, amazing influence, and they're brilliant. They're not afraid of money at all. I mean, I, I'm, a lot of these kids, and I shouldn't use kids, young adults, uh, I've, I've met them and they, they tell me, yeah, I have these clients, I charge 5000 a month, and if they're keeping those clients, that means those clients say there's value there. So, and I, I probably don't have this slide in my uh, deck, so I'll say this. <clears throat> a lot of people buy in the olden days from people they know, like, and trust. Have you heard that before? Okay. I have kind of learned through NGS that there's a new variable, and that variable is value. So if you know, like, and trust someone, but you don't know if you're going to get value, you're not going to buy from them. But if you add value to those first three variables, it is crazy the amount of tipping point you'll have in, in your, not only your sales, but your abundance in your life. So just something to think about when you're doing any type of product advancement, what value are you bringing to the person that's going to be investing or buying? So how do we fund these ideas, market them so they are embraced by the world? Social media, social proof, Tesla coins. So these are some of the solutions are things I can provide. How does a great idea become an alternative solution? Leveraging the power of this community. So when you have one person speaking here, and let's pretend there's 100 people in the audience, you have a power of 100, just, and it stays in this, uh, this room. My suggestion is when you have someone that's worth betting on or, or the champion of this community that you want to say, hey, let's get behind them, that you're using your 100 times outside of this community. So you're getting more of a, a 10,000 on the low side. And that's how a lot of my ideas or the, the people I'm working with get a, a big splash and, and go into new tribes. See, if our tribe is just talking to our tribe, it's like singing to the choir. We all buy in. But if you really want to have buy-in, you've got to go outside this tribe and you have to hit other tribes. So that times 100 is really a significant increase. And then I, uh, this is an important point. Electricity is just a fad. I think we all agree um, that it's almost run its course. Even Ken Wheeler agrees. <clears throat> See? <laughs> and see, that's social proof. If I had just said his name, you would think I was making that up. But it's proven. <laughs> yeah, everyone get that Ken Wheeler shot. Yes. So this is an upcoming book I'm doing this, this holiday season. And it's something that I'm thankful to you guys. What I've learned here, what I've learned at NGS, what I've learned at CO Space, all these different enriched intellectual conversations, I decided to write a book, and you know, this book may not be the best book in the world, but it's a download of what notes I have, what slides I've taken, and it's something I can give to my son, it's something I can just give away to people that just make their life better. If, if you know the laws of success, you know the mindset you have to have for success, your life will be different, I promise you. So we all know entropy isn't what it used to be. 
So I know you guys, when you get outside this community, you want to be cool. This is the gangster sign. I've seen it done at other conferences. All right, so when we have this mindset right here, we have love, we have connection, we have collaboration. So this is really uh, something I think Aaron really embodies and a, a reason why I was uh, very honored and happy to be part of this, this conversation. So I've enjoyed watching people actually lean in and really be part of this learning process. So these are just a couple of shots I, I really enjoyed taking. So a real explanation of physics. An object at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by another force. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to leave no scientists behind in this conversation. So what part of this do you not understand? Uh, he gave me a limit of time, so I may not go into a lot of explanation on this particular diagram. <laughs> All right, thinking at another level, I love this. Uh, I want to find out where I can get that cup. If you like Tesla, raise your hand. If you don't, raise your standards. <laughs> All right, breakthrough in matter. This reads, along with antimatter and dark matter, we've, uh, we've recently discovered the existence of doesn't matter, which appears to have no effect on the universe whatsoever. <laughs> All right, as promised, <laughs> safety. <laughs> All right, this one's a really good one. So it says, it says, please conserve energy, turn off the lights. And then it says, jokes are new, energy is always conserved. <laughs> Damn you, thermodynamics. <laughs> So going back to why I'm on stage. This is why I'm on stage. My mom passed of Alzheimer's in 2008, and I was a DJ, and I DJed for some 30 years, and that was my life, wedding DJ, boom. I had done four years as a physical science teacher, and I was really, um, it was my connection to my left and right brain, really enjoying the fact that we were talking about critical thinking, problem solving. So when I heard Aaron had this event, I go, finally, I can go back to that, that necessary cerebral uh, interaction. So. I wanted to design a life that made a difference in the world, and so I chose leaders and influencers, authors, and speakers to amplify their goodness. Because if you think about it, in the world we have negative energy and positive energy. It's negative thoughts, positive thoughts. So the more positive energy we amplify from good people, the more it drowns out that negative energy and actually converts it to people actually buying in that the positive force or the positive energy or the positive thinking actually makes the world more abundant and loving. So this is a show I do, and uh, anyone here who likes to be on radio shows, has a book, has a message they'd like to hear, my, uh, my show is appropriately called Amplified. And it's about amplifying the life of leaders and influencers. So Amplify makes things louder without distortion. So it's funny, I tell people, do not invite me to a bad restaurant, because I'm going to amplify it louder and quicker. You're going to go to business faster. So I want to amplify goodness, because I'm not trying to hurt anyone. I want people to know that there's so much good in this world. And so much good in this world is actually a secret. So that's why I chose this particular uh, it's on my license plate in my car, too. So I want to acknowledge this gentleman. He's been acknowledged over and over again, but I'm honestly not only not here, if it wasn't for him, but he had this vision, and he brought us all together. And without his idea, without his commitment to this, we are not at this place, space, and time. So I want to give a round of applause to Aaron. <laughs> Now, I put that slide in very timely there because he's probably about to kick me off stage, and I still got about 10 minutes. Uh. <laughs> All right, so power of two. These are two people that are supporting this uh, uh, event in interesting ways. Shannon, on, the, on your right, is the person that actually recommended me uh, to this event, and Aaron looked at what I was doing, and he accepted. So I have her to acknowledge, and then uh, Nadia is doing the Shigong in the morning, which is really a great energy. Uh, exercise and mindset to get into this event for a full day of, of feeling your utmost. So they deserve a round of applause too. So this is the shot last year and it just goes to show you that a power of one always leads to a, a larger power of leadership and a larger power of community. So you know I was so happy and shocked to see this picture because I was experiencing you know the intellectual 
passive energy of just cerebral stuff happening. I wasn't seeing like physical energy happen. And when I said, did everyone have a great time at this event? It exploded and I was so excited to see that there was just, that's social proof that this is valuable. There's social proof that there is community. There's social proof that people really love being here and love being together here. So that's the power of a shot. That's the power of a photograph. He could sell this at a much bigger space. His decision is, does he want to? I said he's my unique client that I actually don't know what to do to build this because it's built. It's as big as it can get in this room. The question is, does he want to go to a bigger establishment? So social proof opportunities. This is something that you can do the remainder of the day while I'm here. The group shot, when you, we're thinking about doing the group shot before lunch so we have the max amount of people because there is kind of a disbursement after lunch. The keep smiling photo, if you're not in this slide deck or you don't remember doing a uh, keep smiling shot, you can exercise later and say, I don't want to be in the book, but if you can get that shot with me, you have that option later to say, yeah, I've decided I do want to be in the book. The idea of this book is that we acknowledge someone and honor them for what they know and how they create community and how they solve problems in the world. And then the left side, left side of the page, is their why, what they're actually solving, some gold nuggets. So you're getting the face and then you're getting the why and the intelligence and the gold nugget drop. And then photos with authors, obviously there's some great authors here. If you tell Aaron, hey, let's on the next break, let's have Eric at the step and repeat. I will take shots every single person that wants to be with Eric or Aaron or whoever. And then photos of your invention. Whatever you have that you want photographed, I'm a professional photographer. That photo is given to you. I want credit for it, that's it, but it can be used for your website. Photos sell your professionalism. So when you have photos that are taken by friends or on iPhones, I'm sorry to say, it's just like anything else. A book, it, it, people say they don't judge a book by cover, they do. So if it's not a good presentation, you're going to lose interest quickly. These are a, a word to our sponsors. Thank you. Uh, every event I go to, I know that sponsors help create the event through funding, through support, and leveraging, and their communities. So these are some of the sponsors. Let's just give them a round of applause real quick. And I don't know if you've had this to see it, but I'll tell you, every single day when I have it, it, it does really ground me or energize me more. So he's, he's a cool guy. He's very generous. So um, for my marketing brother, Anya Palm, uh, this is, these are if scientists had logos. So this is a, because he's a marketing guy, I'm a marketing guy. So when I found this, I was like, this is a good thing to share. <laughs> so even though this is humor or an attempt at it, I will say that you thinking about a logo that really catches people is so important. For instance, this is Big Events USA, but the acronym, the, the letters say BU. And the concept is BU is being the top 1%. So when you're operating and committed to being the top 1%, you're finally being you. And that's why I chose this particular brand and even to wear it every single day. So this is my power one, my son, and I will start zipping through a little quicker here. He is uh, the reason I stand on a stage and do the best I can up here is because I want to be a role model for him. He is being taught to be a leader. He's being taught to be a game changer. I teach him critical thinking and problem solving since age three. I bought him the circuitry boards that are supposed to be for eight years and older. And you know, you integrate a, a child into that, they're already thinking about problem solving. So it's been a lot of fun with him. And he is, uh, he is a handful, I'm silly. I'm not silly at all, but. <laughs> So this is uh, him just two weeks ago. Uh, I promised that this is the last slide. I couldn't help myself. He was inspired by the World Cup. So he's, he watched the World Cup. And this is a book I just wrote for my son. And the next book I want to write, I want to do it with partners like you. I want to make a children's book that actually has kids think in an animated way how simple science is and why it's so wonderful. When I taught eighth grade science, I asked my kids uh, how many people love science. And not too many people raised their hands. And I taught in an inner city school, kind of, kind of a tough school. And I said, how many hate science? And they raised their hands, lots. And I said, well, why do you hate science? And they go, it's hard. I don't get it. And I said, well, tell you what, you can't be a hypocrite. If you hate something, you can never use it. And they said, OK. What does hypocrite mean? And I said, well, you're do if you're doing something that you say you hate, but you use it, that means you're a hypocrite. So everyone is going to come to school tomorrow who hates science, naked and smelly. Because you can't use toothpaste, you can't use toothbrush, you can't use anything that was provided by science. You can't listen to music, you can't listen to your iPad, you can't listen to anything. So they started liking science more. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> this is a book I wrote called The 50 Book Challenge for Fatherhood. And I just found the best 50 books I could find so I could be a better father to my son. My challenge to you guys 
is what is the 50 book challenge? We name books in this community, but what if there was a 50 book challenge? On January 1st or on your birthday, you decide for one year you'll buy one book a week and spend one hour a week with that book learning what you love most, which is critical thinking and problem solving if you think about it. This is uh, the book I wrote after doing 100 countries. These are some of the countries I've been to, just a little social proof. And that's a, a recent trip to Nevada. And I'll be hopefully getting some nice shots in Idaho here. That's that book I was referring to that I, if I hadn't written that book, there's no books afterwards. The most authors that write their book, they fail because they don't have a marketing plan, so they never write another book. They think their book is bad. It was their marketing that was bad. It was their distribution that was bad. It was their campaign that was bad. So this book led to five editions plus another 21 books. This is a book, we did not get too many photobombs done at this particular event. 2016 we did, so I encourage you guys to photobomb each other. It's definitely a, a way of adding some levity and <laughs> proof that we're having fun here. So there's my son uh, there. Here's some, uh, here's some examples of people that have held my card. So I've never had anyone say I will not hold a card of me saying that I honor um, humanity, that I honor making a difference in the world, that I honor creating smiles in the world. So, John Travolta, I don't care who, Buzz Aldrin, I have hundreds of people that have held the card. And this is my favorite right here. Because he didn't smile for a couple days. And he doesn't smile, I guess, that often because he told me that. And on the, third, on the second day, I guess it was the last day, I, I said, you're not going to do that, sh uh, that shot, are you? And he goes, no, I'll do it. And he actually gave me a heck of a smile. So that's one of my favorite shots. And then, of course, Santa Claus over inside. <laughs> And how often do you see this guy smiling? Unless he's had six beers, no way. He's not going to smile. <laughs> All right, so I was honored to be amongst these great minds. And uh, these are some more brilliant speakers. And these are the shots I'm going to use in the book unless they, they want a different shot. But isn't it cool that this shot here is going to have a page next door to it that reminds you what happened here? It's their words of how they are actually creating a better world. And this is... Uh, Manly got in a real big fight with Ken about Manly beer being better than Ken beer. And so obviously he, he tried it and he said, yeah, the Ken beer is better. And so everyone's trying to drink this Ken beer. So congratulations, Ken Wheeler, for dominating another conversation. I loved it so much when I watched Ken. He was like, am I speaking too fast? Just let me know if I'm speaking too fast. Because I can slow down. I just let me know. <laughs> so these are some of my favorite shots. What I loved about John Bandini, uh, and it's so fortunate I was here in 2016, because I, I, first of all, I did not know who he was, and secondly, I did not understand how much influence he had in this community. But I saw him speak, and the crowd just hovered in. And I, the shots I have of people watching him speak are actually as interesting as him speaking and sharing. You see the love? That's so cool. I mean, when he is telling and downloading and sharing his brilliance, and these are a couple shots, I guess, here, of just people that are intrigued and watching and listening. So I love this, this little collage here. This is just uh, how big the Key Smiling movement's gotten. Uh, 24 languages we're, we've got. We have roughly 15 books. We're trying to get 100 books done by the end of the year. Don't ask me how I'm going to do it, but that's my goal. These are some of the language uh, proof. And then this is what we do. This is the problem I think that exists a lot in not just your community, but in most heavily intellectual leadership communities is you have this amazing offline leader. They're a level 10. They're, when they're on stage, they don't just command the stage. They download and engage the stage so much that people are like, I got to get your book. I don't care what it costs. I'm buying this. You know? But when they leave and they go to the virtual world, i.e. social proof, social media, they don't exist because they never cared about proving outside this room that they're brilliant. And what I would suggest to you is that you care about that. You get the photos, you get the social proof, you get the social campaign, so you become a rock star outside this room, causing you to get buy-in of whatever you're selling. It's very important, if you have a list of uh, 10,000, 100,000 people that learn about you because you're on the stage, because it goes viral outside the stage, you are now able to have your idea go into the world. It's that simple. <clears throat> this is uh, my page. I said I had about 962, so it's 967 five-star reviews. Believe it or not, this number right here and this five stars, just like if you were to go to Yelp and find out where the best Chinese restaurant is, best Thai restaurant, this thing sells. I do not have to explain to people that people like my service. I don't have to explain to people that I am committed to customer service. For instance, if I talk to you, sir, and I said, 
I'd like to work with you. What would it take to get a five-star review from you? When you give me the answer, sir, I now know what I have to do. And when I do it, you'll be happy to provide a five-star review, which is just telling your sector, your tribe, that I did my job. I kept my integrity. So this is a very important facet. When you have a problem you're solving in the world, get people to say, yeah, that's five stars. I've been to three restaurants while I've been here, all using Yelp, all heavily on five stars, and all great experiences, unequivocally. So this right here is interesting. We have eight stars. Now that's partly because this community is not a big buy-in on Facebook. What I'm suggesting is that you buy into Facebook because Facebook is where the dollars are. The average person is on Facebook and the average rich person is on Facebook. So if you want money for your ideas, you need to actually connect with that community outside of this room. This is funny. This little one star here, this is no one in our room. This is a guy in Japan who I don't know what the hell he was thinking when he came over to this page and put a one star. Aaron or whoever said, you weren't even at our event. How, how can you rate it a one star? So that, but it just shows how funny one star takes a five average, which he had a five average, down to 4.6. Think about this. If you guys decided, and let's say there's 50 of you that decide today, I'm going to give a five-star review out of gratitude to Aaron for what he creates here, this thing here goes to 4.9. And it becomes a more realistic um, descriptor and also evaluation tool for people that are deciding if they want to go to this event. This says to me that not too many people go to the event. This says to me there's not a lot of consistency. Not that it's bad consistency, it's just not a lot of consistency. So if you go back to mine, mine's a 4.8. I'd much rather be a 4.9. And the stars that are below mine are just like that Japanese guy. They're people that are haters that don't or get confused. They have no comment. They're just putting a one. I don't get it. Yes. So these are some of the other themes. I want to create a theme for, look, we even have the bald edition coming out. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> look, this, is, this guy is the one right there. Mr. Baldy himself, Frank. I love that guy. So he's going to be in that book. And uh, this is actually, a, let me see if I can get the design of, See if I can get that design. Where is it? There is a design I had. These are some of the smiling faces at uh, the ESTC. Aren't they great smiles? And then keep smiling equals love. So these are all those lovely smiles. And it's really interesting that how much energy is actually coming off. I could do a whole presentation on just smiling the energy. When you smile and you get someone else to smile, your energy level not only goes up, but your ability to uh, be efficient, your ability to produce, is really outrageous. You're, so when I am in a bad mood in the morning, if I am, I think of things that will shift it. So a lot of my books are called Shift Happens because the second you're in negative land, you're attracting more of the same. So the universe is actually saying, hey, you're negative, let me help you make that your reality. Let's just keep giving you that negativity. But when you shift it out, all of a sudden, the phone calls start coming in, love starts coming in, and, and the world, and the universe is actually saying, okay, you want that? Okay, you've proven you're shifting, we'll give you a great day. And when you have that great day, what a difference in the results, right? So I'm so excited that Karen is going to be partnering with me. This book will have uh, faces of the past scientists alternating with faces of the new scientists. In other words, the scientists that you're hearing speak here will be alternating in color, and Tesla and whoever else is voted to be the alternating checkerboard will be the black and whites. So that's the book cover we're going to do. And I'm excited that Karen is part of this, that she's going to partner with this, because I know that she does a great product. I know I'm a little out of my league on creating something this powerful for this community. So she's going to help. Aaron's going to help. And whoever else wants to help, I'm, I'm very excited about this project. The project is almost like a who's who and a gold nugget share. So think about it. Every person that's pictured shares their gold nuggets of what they So when you forget what you hear here, where do you have to go? You have to go to your notes, you have to go to a computer. This is a little coffee table book that whenever you want to engage and find out something that you may have forgotten that will help you um, with what you're doing, it's right there. So if you guys have a book, picture it there because this is where the books go. They go on my slideshows, they go at, uh, on my tables, they go all around the world. So this is a 50 book challenge that I did that uh, is books that uh, changed my life. Anyone that wants this as an ebook can have it for free. In fact, most of the books I put up here, if they're ebooks, which most of them are, I will give you these books, all you do is text me. And this is the slide deck I was talking about. This is, there's, I don't know, about 100 or so. But some of these are recent. These are Aaron's right here. And unless some speaker said do not, do not photograph it or share it, they've been, they have been uh, made available in the slide deck. So this is a best of 2016, 2018, just given to you for free. All you do is text me, which that number is coming up very soon. I created this uh, definition because I'd had some really bad partnerships in my life, and I wanted to share something I think that's the most valuable gold nugget for you. 
is the reason we have scarcity, the reason we have fear, the reason we have bad partnerships is because we don't exercise this definition, which is if I say to Aaron, I'd like to partner with you on creating this community into something much bigger than what you have, I would like to compete with you unconditionally, which means I will never compete with him to share, I'm doing more than you, when are you going to do more for me? It's unconditional giving. So that's the, how you keep a successful partnership, is you invest to compete unconditionally. It's very powerful. So may the mass times acceleration be with you. <laughs> if you text me at this number, 202-7010911, your name, email, and if you're interested in being the Key Smiling Book or writing your own book, marketing or innovation, what books you want for free, all those books that I put up there, the Key Smiling Book, they're all free. And I believe that is the last slide. So, yep. So there you go. So thank you very much. <laughs>